scared for me Hey, it's Chris O'Neill. And Adam Perry. And this week we're talking about one of the newer trilogies, the X Trilogy, directed by Ty West, starring Mia Goth, probably one of the better film collaborations of the past decade or so. Yeah, very popular. Um, it's been uh, quite the buzz amongst the horror community. Right. Um, since uh, X came out in uh, 2022 and right up through Maxine. Right yeah, Maxine now. just barely came out this week. And I, I got to see it last night. Unfortunately, Adam, you haven't seen any of no, them. No, no, no. Um, oh, that stinks. You know, We're going to spoil it for you. Spoil away. I'll still go and see it eventually. Um, but, yeah, life's been busy, and uh, sometimes you just can't get to the movies. Right. And... Uh, it happens. All right. Yep. So we're going to start with X, of course. That's where it begins. The story of Maxine started with X. She's an aspiring film star. She literally is trying to become a film star. So where where does one begin when you become a film star? Star in a porno. Why not? Hey, so, work for Sly. Yeah, so Sylvester Stallone is probably, Stallone. probably the only one I can think of that... <laughs> That went from the the porn industry into stardom. Right. I can't think of any other porn. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of any. No, I, I mean, but still, I mean, but what bigger name than Stallone? Right. Yeah. So, so Maxine, you know, she she's just so she's all dedicated, all in on becoming a movie star, mm -hmm. and she literally, I will not. I, I'm trying to quote the line, but I I won't sound as good. I won't take anything less than what I'm deserved. Something to that extent. Mm -hmm. I don't have that line in front of me. It's a good thing I'm not a movie star. I'd, I'd fail already. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the guy who funded the project, uh, along with the filmmakers, the stars, the crew, they go to this old abandoned farm area, seemingly abandoned farm in Texas. Uh, they rented it from this old guy. And... The guy didn't know they were making a porno movie, though. And this is like surprise. in the... Yeah, surprise. And this is kind of in the vein of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm -hmm. Ty West has said that was one of the main influences on it. And you know what happens in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So people, you know, young adults, teenagers, up to no good, really. I mean, right. let's face it, making a porno is not, not something that society... Like looks upon with on on with kindness and love and reverence. You know what I mean? No. Yeah, it's um, socially unacceptable. I guess you could say, uh, or, to say uh, the so, least. So, socially um, uh, taboo. Satan's work, right? Well, I mean, listen. Some people got to work, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I. You know, it, porn's not my cup of tea, but you know what? If it's yours and. You can make money, a good living, and you don't care about exposing yourself like that. God bless you. Right. You know, right. It's, you know, it's all personal opinion. And, you know, again, the people who act in that genre and participate, you know, it's they got to live with uh, what they do and with themselves. So, right. So that's how Maxine, mm -hmm. she's, she's running away from her life. And her father, come to find out, is a Pentecostal preacher. And you don't know that until the end of. X. This could be a problem. It could be. It really <laughs> could be a problem. So there's like a, a house away from the main house. It's like a like a barn area. Okay. There's like a there's like a, a room there. Apparently, this guy rents out. All right. Rents out uh, the spot. It's like a an Airbnb for 1979. Okay. <laughs> the, so he doesn't know. He thinks they're just going to be camping there, you know, enjoying themselves, but. Uh, come to find out they're shooting a porno and he's not the nicest guy in the world. He's like, keep away from the house, mm -hmm. you know, and come to find out he has a wife because his wife is wandering around and you see her kind of eyeing Maxine for yeah. some reason. And there's a reason for that because, you know, as the movie progresses, it seems like Maxine and Pearl are a lot alike, mm -hmm. you know, um, Pearl's constantly, you know, she she's got the like, you know, the the mirror set up where you can kind of see yourself at all angles. There's like, yep. you know, in a in a wardrobe room and right. stuff. She's got that kind of set up, so she's like combing her what's left of her hair and everything like that. 
I got to credit let, before we go any, any further. Mia Goth is is abs- absolutely superb and creates one of the most unforgettable movie characters. And again, t- we we can't say of all time because we have to see how this these movies stand up like decades afterwards. Sure. But this has potential to be like you know, up there with Psycho, Mike Myers, a, a great Jason standout Voorhees. trilogy, yeah. Right. And and a franchise too, mm-hmm. um, but we're we're I'm kind of jumping around here. So X is the first one in the they call it the X trilogy, and you meet Maxine and Pearl for the first time. Maxine is kind of the the main character, mm-hmm. but uh, anyways. <laughs> So they're filming uh, th- th- these porno sequences, and and of course, Pearl seems not to like what they're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, she's wandering around in the middle of the night. You know, and one by one, the 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 cast and crew start getting killed with wow. pit- pitchforks and all sorts of shotgun. Well, Pearl kills the first uh, the producer. Like he's trying to look, seeing who's outside his door, and literally through the hole, she puts the pitchfork right, right in his eyes. Classic. Yes. Classic. So there's a lot of gore here, but I mean, again, this is a slasher movie. Yep. You know, where one by one, who's going to survive at the end? Jenny Ortega is also in it. Mm-hmm. So they, she's a rising star. Yeah, she's a rising star, and could she be the final girl? Well, the focus is on Maxine, so. It seems like Maxine's going to be the final girl here. You know, spoiler alert if you haven't seen these. It's a pretty predictable movie. It, it doesn't always always work, in my opinion, but it's it's the the things that bubble underneath the surface that make the, these mm-hmm. movies really effective. Because the 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 main theme about X is the fact that it's you know the the changing. Yeah. Things always change, and Pearl is is jealous of Maxine, not because of her stardom. Like you think she's she's maybe jealous of that, but come to find out, or maybe you know because you know the sexual stuff. You know, right. her and her husband can't really have sex. He's got heart issues. Mm-hmm. Like the he, she's trying to like literally grope him. Yeah, and he's like, oh my heart, my heart, I can't. You know, he's all he's worried about his heart. Out of commission. Well, and and that's a thing. It's not even about the sex. It's the fact that Maxine is young and she's pursuing her dream, which right. we'll find out in Pearl. She doesn't get to pursue her dream. She she kind of holds herself back. But but that's the main thing about it is change mm-hmm. is always constant. Change will defeat any preconceived notion that you may have. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. And so Howard, her husband, Pearl's husband, pretty much offs the rest of the cast pretty much to try to, gotcha. is he covering up for Pearl? Is he taking it all upon himself? Or is he, you know, you don't really, you know, get all the motives. He's just trying to be a, um, a loyal husband. He's just trying to, and it seems like you see other vehicles in, in the, the lake that's behind their farm so it's kind of like a psycho reference there Mm -hmm. because norman bates you know in the swamp all the cars (laughs) came to the bates motel right and in this this case all the vehicles that visit the farm go into the lake and you know that's probably why there's not a lot of people that come out to this old uh it looks like an abandoned farm yeah i mean you literally think that no one lives here and they're at the beginning of the movie, when they pull up, they're trying to, hello, is there anybody here? And mm-hmm. the old guy comes out. He's not very friendly. And you know, now you know why he isn't friendly, because he knows the fate of what's going to happen to these right. young folk. The old guys are never friendly in these movies. The, the, no, not typically. Them, them. not typically. Not <laughs> typically. You know, you usually have in, in a horror movie the mysterious old person who who is there to kind of guide and help. Yep. But even then, they're not the friendliest. They're mysterious no. and they're, yep. they're kind of grumpy. Yep. Well, this movie, the guy's not only mysterious and grumpy, you know, and one of the one of the, the, the crew served in Vietnam and come to find out Howard, Pearl's husband, served in World War One. So you think there's going to be a camaraderie 
you know, and, you know, I'm a Marine and all that kind of stuff. But no, <laughs> no, it <laughs> doesn't doesn't really help the Vietnam vet out too much. That's interesting. And it's kind of interesting that they put something like that in the movie because, um, you know, and, and unfortunately in real life, um, a lot of the Viet, the last stigma with the Vietnam vets. Right. A lot of uh, grudges, you know, between like the Korean uh, war vets and I don't know about the Korean War as much as Vietnam. I mean, I didn't see the I didn't see as much people like upset for the as well the the, the, the well I mean I mean you can go uh, all the way to, to first blood with this and that, and that was kind of the the issues between John Rambo and the sheriff. Um, the Korean War is considered the forgotten war. True, you know, their their troops didn't come home to parades and and you know. Because MacArthur yeah. thought it, it wasn't finished, we can't finish the war until we go. Oh, it's go not to China. It, it, it's not finished. No. It, it's it's a, it's the war is still uh, active today. Right. But but even still, like you know, that was kind of like the the issues between the generations is that the Korean War is the forgotten war. You know, the troops came back after fighting for however many years the act, right. act, actual fighting was, and um, you know, then they watched the Vietnam vets come back after you know losing a war and seeing right. how they were treated and, and a jealousy and spit it, on yeah, they were yeah. spit upon they had things thrown you know, at them and then you had the greatest Ugh. generation before korea you know with uh the world war ii right so i mean so yeah there's a lot of jealousy you know between the generations yeah and this is interesting too because yeah. this is like a few years after the vietnam war ended in 1979 yeah that's when the movie takes place and howard served in world war one his character yeah. was in world war one like 60 years before mm-hmm. all the events in X. So it, it, it is kind of interesting. There, there, there's a little bit of an understanding between the two, but that quickly fades away because it's like, I've got to do this for Pearl. You know? right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's got to be there for his wife. And I'm going to kind of combine X and Maxine while talking about X because you just can't, and I, I hope you've seen these movies before you listen, because we're going to be discussing all three of the movies and how they all kind of connect and click together. Because, I mean, Pearl and Maxine are the driving force in X. Obviously, Pearl is the driving force in Pearl, but the the lingering effect of Pearl is still felt with Maxine in Maxine. Mm-hmm. So it's a very interesting trilogy because... And that's why Mia Goth plays both of them, mm-hmm. is the fact that they, they, they're they not anything alike, but they share kind of the same soul. Yeah. Their same mission. It's just they go about it differently and get yeah. into their goals. So while Pearl and Howard off her whole team, uh, her whole film crew, you know, basically, you know, leaving um, uh, Jenny Ortega kind of locked in the in the cellar. Mm-hmm. for something that might happen later. And while well, down there, you know, Jenny Ortega's character, Lorraine, sees all of these, you know, she sees a couple of corpses down there. One one of a, a, a male that was like kind of hung upside down and it kind of alludes that Maxine may have had some sex slaves. <laughs> uh-huh. So very interesting because obviously with Howard's heart condition, she can't, you know, be pleasured as many times as she wanted to be, apparently. I don't know. The movie doesn't really talk about that. You just kind of alludes it's, to it. Implies. Right. And and it is it is gory, but it's not like, I mean, it's nothing like too gory like we haven't seen this before. Right. It, it's more of the, the subject matter that really sticks with you and all, especially Pearl. So Pearl is dispatched of by Maxine at the end of X. Like literally, she, like, runs a tire through her head. Oh, yeah, that's because I mean, Maxine has to get out of there. Right. Pearl is stuck there because of her own anger and ing- ignorance and all that kind of stuff. I mean, Pearl tries to kill Maxine. She tries to kill Lorraine. Howard kills Ma- uh, Lorraine because Maxine's discovering all of her. Her uh, filmmaking crew and all of her co-stars being dispatched off one by one. She comes across their bodies, just like you see in Texas Chainsaw yeah. Massacre. And, 
you know, Lorraine's locked in the cellar. She rescues Lorraine. So, I mean, Maxine's a hero of the story. Mm -hmm. But... And, and Lorraine's like freaking out because she thinks Maxine's involved somehow. She's just not thinking clearly. She's hysterical. I mean, I mean, she's had her fingers chopped off because she's trying to escape and Howard cuts her fingers off, and, you know, and I think Lorraine would be all of us just being hysterical, trying to get the hell out of there. I mean, yeah, yeah. But a shotgun ends her ends mm -hmm. Lorraine. So Jenny Ortega is not going to survive. So, but Howard has a heart attack and dies. And Pearl is pissed. <laughs> Pearl is absolutely pissed. So she picks up the shotgun, tries to shoot Maxine, but the force knocks her back. She breaks her hip, and she's kind of crawling in the driveway. So Maxine fires up the Howard's old truck, backs it up, <laughs> does away with Pearl, and drives off. And, and that's the thing. Like The, the movie kind of ends where it begins because the movie opens up, and I love the opening shot where it's like the – the farm doors are kind of open and it pans across this beautiful farm landscape where you see some bodies mm -hmm. and you know, the police are there kind of investigating it. And then it goes, I think it's like uh, two days before, you know, you know, movies are. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you see all the events that lead up to that. And the movie kind of ends with that, but in the house and it's kind of lingering throughout the movie, you see this Pentecostal preacher kind of just, you know, doing his, his thing. He sounds over the top. Right. You know, I know some of them are the, you know, it's like, I, I, I'm a follower of Christ and I'm not a huge fan of the, those zealots. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and he sounds like one of those, you know, typical stereotypical Pentecostal preachers. And, mm -hmm. and at the end, he's actually making a plea for Maxine to come home. His little girl has left the house and that's how the movie ends. Maxine's driving off is she going to search for her family or is she going to seek Hollywood? Well, um, to be continued. Yeah, to be continued. So in, instead, it, instead of like continuing the Maxine storyline at the end of the, the credits for X, you, you get a whole thing about Pearl. Mm. It's like, hmm, interesting. And when Ty West was trying to sell this to, you know, A24 Studios, he was like, we got to he used a Back to the Future reference. We got to fix the Biff Tannen timeline before we can get to the 80s horror movie that you want. <laughs> right. <laughs> Pearl is kind of like the Biff Tannen character. Gotcha. So we're going to go back and uh, see what the hell led to her killing all these people because, you know, you could tell she's kind of jealous of Maxine's youth and everything like that. And that's what the whole theme of the, the movie is. I mean, you can't stop mortality i mean it change is inevitable and change will always win and pearl found out about that the hard way she had a mind-blowing experience with that uh, uh, was apparently and, and, and you know what a drag is hypertension because i mean you're in the middle of the killing spree and you have a grabber and drop poor howard yeah well howard he yeah <laughs> he literally yeah there's no way uh, jenny ortega was going to get up from that and yeah and he just, <laughs> he mentioned it earlier, his heart, and they do have sex in that movie. Yeah. You know, after all of the carnage they, they, they've created, they have this passionate sex scene and Maxine's kind of under the, the bed, like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, jeez. And, well, and, I mean, I mean, so, so it's such an interesting way to kill a villain. He has a heart attack. Well, he's not the main villain. Well, obviously. I mean, he's one of the, you know, it's like, yes. Yeah. Per, <laughs> Pearl G Literally had the the cooler death scene. Hell, letting your one of your killers have the grabber and just that be it. Well, I mean, that's that's kind of funny. <laughs> but I let's um yeah I haven't seen it, but just looking at the notes on uh, online here, man, I, like this is a uh, independent horror making at its right. best. Right, a budget of one million dollars makes fifteen point one million dollars yeah. in the box office worldwide. Yeah, X, that is awesome. X was well received. Now we move on to Pearl. So. The vibes are totally different in each one of these three movies. Yeah. Okay. So the first one was all out slasher film. Yeah. All right. And there was some interesting themes that were bubbling beneath the surface and Ty West brilliantly crafted. Mm -hmm. So Pearl is more of a psychological horror film slash melodrama. It's yeah. interesting because you get the colorfulness of Mary Poppins in the wizard of Oz. Yeah. And there's obviously some interesting similarities between Dorothy 
and Pearl, <laughs> they both feel like they're stuck in a rut. Yeah. So this is like even like 21 years before um, Wizard of Oz would be released. We're talking about mm-hmm. 1918. World War One was was near its end. Yeah. She was married to Howard, and Howard had to go and serve overseas. So everyone has their breaking point, Adam. You know, she stuck it on the farm. She was kind of resentful of Howard for not moving off the farm. Mm-hmm. Um, it's alluded that Howard really liked the farm, though. So it's kind of. So Pearl wants to escape. So Pearl is unfortunately like a child that doesn't seem to have grown up. Right. You know, she she's stuck on the farm with her her overbearing mom. I mean, her mom obviously loves her, and her mom is German, so mm-hmm. there's obviously, they kind of allude to some discrimination because of World War One. You know, she's obviously had a rough life, her mom. Yeah. So she kind of takes some of that out. She She's just, like, focused on, you know, we got to survive here. Her father's an invalid for whatever reason. You don't know if it had something to do with uh, the pandemic of the Spanish flu um, or, or what, but he, he literally can't talk. He's kind of almost com- comatose. Yeah. He's in a wheelchair. You know, he's kind of, oh, the whole movie, you know. Gotcha. And, and, and obviously, Pearl versus Maxine. Maxine seems to have figured her, herself out where Pearl really is kind of stuck and she really hasn't figured herself out. She's really a tra- more of a tragic character than anything. Yeah. And, and that and that's I think when when Scorsese gave it like an overwhelming praise for for Pearl, it's it's like I I'm not going to say Ty West was inspired by Scorsese movies, but it's Scorsese's like driving theme. We're going to focus on these characters that really are despicable. Mm-hmm. human beings do they deserve the attention do they deserve our empathy that, that's just like a that's been a glaring question mark you know right. in mo- most of scorsese's body of work i mean raging bull taxi driver goodfellas even killers of the flower moon i mean why did why do we why should we care about these characters because mm-hmm. they're 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 what we would call despicable and pearl just she starts off, she seems to enjoy killing animals. Like, she literally, like, breaks the neck of a goose at the beginning. It's like, oof. How all the serial killers start. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and and that's the thing. Pearl, it, it's it's like she doesn't want to become a serial killer, though. She, yeah. she wants to be a dancer. She, when she goes to get her father's medication, she literally takes the leftover money, sneaks into the movies, Mm-hmm. And she's just enticed by the dancing yeah. uh, troops that she sees on the big screen. Because mm-hmm. she really wants to be a dancer. She really wants to be a star. Yeah. And, and and she, but she's got a lot of problems, <laughs> a lot of problems. And I, I'm saying that lightly because it's, 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 it's a beautifully heartbreaking, gory, um, film and it's very unsettling to say the least it's very disturbing mm-hmm. i mean again the gore is nothing new the gore yeah. we've seen a thousand times but it's just the all of the 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 things going on psychologically with pearl the whole movie it's almost like and i mentioned to you before we hit the record button it's almost like if we got to hear norman bates's inner thoughts and Inter- yeah and it's interesting how hitchcock shifts gears and psycho we talk uh, i could talk about that movie forever and just be totally amazed with it uh we we see things from norman's perspective but we don't get inside his head and rob zombie tried to get inside mike myers head uh, to varying degrees of success with halloween but this time we get to hear and see pearl's inner thoughts hmm. and it's not easy to watch no i can imagine <laughs> Uh, it, it really, imagine. it really isn't, and and it was hard. It was hard for horror film audiences. Yeah, the movie uh, made nine million more because this movie cost a million dollars to make as well. Yeah, a million dollars, and it went on to gross uh, ten million. It, but but it wasn't a 
it wasn't an overwhelming success though. Right. There there was a lot of mixed reviews from horror fans because they they saw the slasher movie. I think they were kind of expecting some more Another of that. Slasher, yeah. But but here you have a, an amazing character study. And it really is an amazing character study. You know, it's it's all psychological. There there is some gore kills for for the slasher fans mm-hmm. to enjoy. Plenty of it. But it's it's the the whole psychological and it's very melodramatic. You wow. don't expect to watch this in a horror movie. After watching X, to to have like a totally different vibe. It's like it's like a completely different world and movie. And I, you know, yes, it's within the same universe that yeah. uh, Ty West created, but it, it's so different in vibes. Wow, it really is. And the Spanish flu is going on and, and it's just, there's just so much repression for, for Pearl feels so repressed, mm-hmm. not only sexually because her wife is, uh, her husband's away. Uh, so she, the movie theater projectionist kind of hits on her and she kind of likes the attention. Doesn't, doesn't give in quite a bit, but on the way home, um, after seeing a, a movie, she, or, um, there was like a, some sort of film thing that he cut for her and it blows into the cornfield and and then she goes searching for it and then she comes across the scarecrow, starts dancing with the scarecrow and then um, makes love to it. Uh-huh. So more and more of yeah. the, you could see her kind of slowly breaking down. Yeah. <laughs> if making love with an inanimate object isn't enough, it's, you know, she still has problems with her with her mom, and it comes to a, a head when it's raining. Of course, rain it has to have a thunderstorm right. to to change the mood. So they're arguing at the dinner table. You know, again, her mom is is upset, and I, you know, you kind of side with the mom a little bit. Yes, she's overwhelming, but Pearl just doesn't help her out that much because <laughs> Pearl just wants to get out of the farm. You understand where both of them are coming from. It is, and I think it's a testament to Ty West for, you know, bringing some sympathy to the mom character because, you right. know, in any other story, you know, the mom is kind of, you know, evil. And in this movie, she's she's not evil. She's just very overwhelming. And she's just one of those overwhelming parents that just, they're so strict. Yeah. And, and but she just, you, 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 you know, she wants to, what's best for, for Pearl and the family. Mm-hmm. And it's tough. She's literally raising Pearl on her own because her husband is almost coma-like, you know? Yeah. So they have a huge argument at the dinner table, and they kind of get into a fight, and somehow Pearl's mom gets too close to the fireplace and her dress catches on fire, and she starts burning. And, of course, I mean, Pearl didn't do that on purpose, mm-hmm. but... Um, she takes like this burning water, tosses it on her mom to try to get rid of the flames. So I mean, Pearl kind of like, "Oh my god, what have I done?" kind of a thing and she didn't mean to do it, but her mom is just is burnt to death pretty much. Right. It, but she's not dead. That's the thing. This is where Pearl really starts getting really twisted. So she takes her mom's like dragging her down into the cellar. It's like boom, 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 boom. And she just locks her mom in the cellar. So burnt corpse and all almost. She's still alive, yeah. but she's she's locked in the cellar, and, and her dad is just watching all of this. He can't do anything. So then she just runs to the movie theater, sleeps with the projectionist, has sex with him, and, and she's hoping that the projectionist will take her away. So the projectionist comes to her house, brings her back home, and he discovers all this stuff. It's just like, what? Something's not right here. And he's ready to leave, and Pearl's like, "You're not going to take me with you." And and she's just like very overbearing to this projection. He was just looking for a, a, a lay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I hate to be that blunt, but well, he's just I mean, looking to sleep with someone. Is he, what it is. He, he 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 has his own life, and he wants to get out of there too. And well, he unfortunately, get out of there. no, he doesn't get out no. of there. You know, Pearl uh, pitchforks him to the ground. All right, but, yeah. Pitchfork again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Pitchfork made the sequel. And, and she literally puts him in, in the, the car, drives the, the car into the into the lake. And 
She has a she has a friend uh, a friendly crocodile that helps out too. So, what a way to get rid of a body, right? <laughs> yeah, right. And she was almost like she was going to be doing. She almost she had thoughts about doing that with her dad earlier in the in the movie. I forgot to mention. Yeah, that. she's bringing her dad out on the on the deck leading into the lake and. You know, kind of teasing the crocodile, and the mom kind of interrupts that. Thankfully, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, after her mom gets burnt up, and she throws, you know, not throws, drags, you know, butting uh, the head against the stairs to make it to drive the point home even more. That pearl is now completely gone. So yeah, she was hoping that the projectionist would take her away from her life, but she's also. Um, Howard's sister, you know, said, hey, maybe we can uh, audition for this uh, traveling church choir. And she's like, oh, goodness. Yeah, I can get out of here. I can I can sing and dance on the stage. And Mm -hmm. they're holding auditions. So she does her audition. And, you know, this is where the movie takes like a, you know, it's very colorful. She's on stage imagining herself dancing with all these troops and everything like that. And and then uh, after. uh, no, you know, we don't like the look of you, so we're going to go with someone else. Burn. Yeah, we're, we're looking for a blonde, and her sister-in-law happens to be a blonde. and <laughs> So that kind of crushes her dreams, and, you know, such a heartbreaking um, scene where you, you see, I mean, Mia Goth really sells it, you know, ye- yelling out, I'm a star, you know. I'm sure you've seen that preview, that clip yes, floating yeah, around. Yep. It's such a heart-wrenching yell yeah. and scream. So she she's disheartened at this point. And, and for, I, you know, it's like if it was Maxine that failed the audition, she, she would find another way. Mm-hmm. Where Pearl, for some reason, because she's repressed and this was her only ticket out and it's gone. Yeah. For whatever reason, it, it, she just gives up it's just like okay i've got to stay on the farm so after her sister-in-law brings her back to to the the farm they they sit and and pearl really lets out you know why she she pretty much confesses all the things she's done but you get to understand this is like uh you saw gangs in new york right yep remember when bill the butcher has that monologue sure and he's almost yep. breaking down crying mm-hmm. Pearl literally breaks down. She she's crying, sobbing. You really get to understand, and you kind of sympath sympathize a little bit with her because you got to remember she's already killed a few people at this point and several farm animals. So it's kind of hard to sympathize with her, mm-hmm. but you at least understand where she coming from. She's coming from. I you know I think if if any other actor had portrayed Pearl. You know, it would have been a straight up villain role, but the way right. the way Ty West wrote the character, the way Mia Goth performed it, there there's a lot of reasons to empathize with her a bit. Because I mean, not everyone's characters the same. Right. You know, you see Maxine, and you see you know she has a different mindset, but Pearl, obviously repressed, and you know. She's got a lot of resentment towards her husband, resentment towards her family, because you find out in that monologue near the end of the movie that they had a child and the child didn't live. Oh wow! So and it's a lot of stuff, yeah. Yeah. you know, psychological stuff that happened to Pearl, and she even you know admits what I, I think a lot of moms. I'm probably not a good mom. I can't do it. a lot of moms say that in, in their head. Yeah. They, yeah. they don't like literally say it out loud because you know, they would sound insane like Pearl. Mm-hmm. So the sister-in-law is just hearing this and it's like, Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> you can see it's like really affected the sister-in-law and she tries to, you know, leave and, and Pearl's like, you got the part, didn't you? You got it. Didn't you? And she's like, no, I didn't get the part admit it admit it and she goes yes i got the part and she tries to leave and well she doesn't leave she doesn't leave she she gets the gets stabbed and uh thrown into the into the lake with the crocodile all right crocs eating good yeah so i mean that's how pearl ends Mm -hmm. and i and i kind of just summed up in a two entire movies and in about 20 30 minute time span but 
Now we get to Maxine, which is, again, a totally different vibe than Pearl and X. Mm -hmm. It's got like a murder mystery thriller element to it with a dose of uh, religious horror in it, too. Hmm. So Maxine, she's in the she's booming in the, the porn industry right now, but she's auditioning for different roles. And the movie literally starts off her walking into an audition, very confident, definitely a different Maxine too. She's more quiet, more reserved mm-hmm. in, in X where she, at this point she's, she's, she's a familiar face in the, in the adult film industry. Okay. Yep. So she's trying to audition though for different roles. And there, I think there was this music video, um, that she was auditioning for. And, and there was one director filmmaker that was watching her and she was really impressed with with what she saw with Mm -hmm. Maxine so it's funny she's leaving the audition kind of like in Pearl very confident that she you know she's going to get the part in Pearl whereas she doesn't and she totally has a mental breakdown Maxine is confident about her performance she literally yells to the she kind of flaunts it in front of all of the the women who are in the line (laughs) yeah you aren't going to get that part because I just effing nailed it like that. She's like <laughs> literally that confident. So oh. she didn't get that part. But again, uh, there was a filmmaker there in the horror movie genre mm-hmm. that really liked what she saw and wanted to cast her in a sequel to uh, an, another horror movie. And this is 1985 L.A. OK, apparently I didn't realize this. There was a Night Stalker, um, a real murderer in yep. L.A. called The Night Stalker. Yep. See, you you know it. I t- yeah. totally didn't. I, yep. I was only f- five years old at the time. I didn't really pay attention to that. Yeah. Um, what do you know of it? Did you? Because uh, you seem to know about it a little I, bit. I know of it. Um, I'm not. Uh, I'd have to read up again. It's been a minute. Um, but a fun fact about the, the Night Stalker case, the head detective on the Night Stalker case was the same detective on the O.J. Simpson case. So, yeah. That's right. Um, John Lang. Yeah. So Very interesting. And a, and a decade apart, he, too. He, he's actually writing a book right now on all of his uh, crimes that uh, he's investigated, including uh, Night Stalker and OJ. Do we, do we see another film franchise coming? <laughs> uh, Could be. You know, based off his books, uh, that'd be one hell of a franchise. Uh, right. One hell of a, a movie. You know, right. Follow this detective who... Uh, I mean, within invest, a decade... Investigated yeah. all these serial killers in California. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, within a decade, the Night Stalker and O.J. Simpson, it's like, pfft, yeah, two major cases. And he, yeah, um, I, you know, I'm not going to go off into a true crime because I could go on forever. But, uh, you know, if you like true crime, check out his books. He's got a, um, uh, another book um, uh, called Evidence Dismissed, and it was all the evidence that Marsha Clark and the defense threw out in the O.J. case, which would have put the man behind bars. Right, you know. So, um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, j- that's um, if you're asking me about the no- Night Stalker without d- doing any sort of uh, refreshing in my mind, that's kind of the only thing that's sticking out right now. Well, that's how in the movie kind of you know during the credits you get kind of the big headlines, but then it really focuses in on the Night Stalker cases, all of the the murder victims that are yeah. showing up in the news talking about it. Yeah, so it's a big deal, very so, big deal. So Maxine, she's trying her best to become a movie star, Mm -hmm. you know, repeating the, the mantra that her father kind of preached over the years. And that, you know, you see Maxine as a little girl being filmed by her dad, which is kind of awkward in itself, but yeah, the, the preaching aspect is very important in this movie. It's kind of hovering in the background and it comes to a full head in the middle of the, in like near the third act. So Maxine, Again, she 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 definitely gets a part in a new horror movie. It's a sequel to a, a horror movie. I forget the name of the the horror movie. There, it was a real horror movie too, because the case, like th- that's the thing. It's the the boom of the video industry, video yeah. rent, the home video industry. Like she's she she's friends with a guy who runs a video store. Yeah, and you get to see all of these cheesy horror movies. You know, oh, lying interesting. around. Yeah. You know, I kind of like that, that they're blending realism. Yeah. Um, 
Oh yeah, with, with uh, this story. And I just want to correct myself in case I made a mistake. I think I said John Lang. The investigator was Tom Lang. Tom Lang. Okay. Tom Lang. Um, I just wanted to correct that if I made the mistake. I don't I want to make sure the credit is given where credits due. Right. Right. Here. Yeah. There. But yeah, it like like at the you know 1979 era of X, you've got the Spanish flu, World War One, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it was it was interesting because I think he shot X and, and Pearl kind of like 2021. 20, yeah. You know, so people wearing masks. It was yeah. Kinda, interesting. Yeah. So, you literally see people wearing masks in uh, Pearl mm-hmm. So because of the Spanish flu. Right. So, this one, yeah, 1985 LA. And, you know, she seems like she's doing okay. You know, she's got a, a cast, an agent helping her out and- because he gives like, yeah, you didn't get the part for this music video, but you definitely uh, are are definitely in the in the line to get this lead role in this horror movie. And she's, hey, I'm going to be a star now. This is my this is yeah. my this is my moment. And of course, it's not that easy because you know while she's like chilling out with her uh, her guy friend who owns a video store, she hears a knock at the door, and outside it's like she sees this mysterious vhs tape in an envelope so she sticks it in and it's one of her sex scenes from from the farm in in x so she's like oh my god who who the heck how did that get here you know Mm -hmm. and then uh come to find out a sleazy private eye played by kevin bacon (laughs) all right and you could tell kevin bacon had a lot of fun with this role he just relished the the sleazy He's just not the night. He's not a nice guy. Yeah, he's literally kind of stalking her and everything like that. And you know, Maxine though is not your typical heroine who's easily shaken because there's this one guy that uh, it's all like dressed up in a costume, kind of following her around, and kind of got her cornered with a locked fence and everything. He's gonna he's gonna try to rape and stab her. Nice, but. She pulls out a, a gun and and the guy's like, oh God, he, he, you could tell he's very weak and he and she asks him to like strip down and lay on the ground naked and then she like squishes his balls. All right. You know, gore scene number one. Okay. But the thing is, uh, the reason I bring up the Night Stalker is because um, these detectives played by Michelle Monaghan and Bobby Cannavale, I'm sure you've heard of those names floating around. Mm-hmm. Um, there is someone that's imitating the Night Stalker murders, putting like um, the pentagram, the sign of the devil on all of their victims. I get. I, did he do that as well, the Night Stalker? I don't know um, much about the Night Stalker, but he, yeah, he's kind of... Yeah. All right, the Night Stalker was Richard Ramirez. Okay. Um, While you're yeah. looking at yeah. at that, it, it's, it's very key that this guy is trying to imitate the Night Stalker murders. Right. Whomever this person is. It could be a, a woman... It, it, someone is aware of Maxine's past, okay? Mm-hmm. And they hired Kevin Bacon to track her down, okay? Yeah. And it's interesting how the the director of this new horror movie literally shows Maxine around the different sets, and they happen to go to the Bates Motel set. Yeah, the sequel was just filmed here. You know, it's like the 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 timing. That I mean. Mm-hmm. Ty West obviously did a lot of research for this. Yeah. And the interesting thing is he put a lot of film grain in there to make it seem like it was shot. I don't know if he shot it on film. I didn't get that information, but he made it look like it was like a like you're watching a home video. Yeah. Like a home VHS video. Mm-hmm. It was really cool. I mean, it's really effective how he set up. I mean, the movie isn't 100% successful, but I mean, Ty West definitely has an awesome acknowledgement and he knows the time he's shooting in you know what i mean yeah he did a lot of research for this it's obvious mm-hmm. and the, the thing about maxine okay you have the the theme of you know old versus you know youth in x yeah and then you have the theme of repression and how to deal with finding yourself in pearl and then you have you know people trying to force the world to bend to to their version of it in Maxine. They're literally forcing Maxine to try to, you know, bend to their will throughout the whole movie. So it's interesting. The people around Maxine, that's another thing, you know, they're, they're dying. Like 
her female friends on the set, you know, they, Hey, let's go to this rich person's party. They're having a big party underneath the Hollywood sign. You know, you got to come up. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. And the next day they end up dead. Maxine's like, I can't go. I've got, I've got to focus she, because she's really focused on trying to become a star at this right. point. So she's like, I gotta, you know, she works at this, uh, uh what do they call, uh, where, where guys can peep in while they're doing exotic moves what do they call that a uh, peep show a peep show yeah yeah so she does that on the side in addition to her porn stuff until she gets the role that she wants and she does get the lead role in this uh upcoming slasher film so she's all excited and but the problem is, is she's got to deal with her past that's another thing you got to deal with your past before you can move on you can't dwell in your past mm-hmm. that's a big theme in a lot of horror movies i don't know if you've noticed you can't yeah. dwell on your past. You got to move on. You you got to big time. You yeah. got to fix it so you can just move on. And for, you know, not forget your past, but move on from it. Mm-hmm. So she uh, hire uh, she she's like be- begging her her uh, agent to take care of all of this. Help her take care of all this stuff. So agent hires some uh, guys, kind of like in Cape Fear, mm-hmm. to try to. You know, doing Kevin Bacon, and he literally gets crushed in a in a car. You know, how, like the the junkyard they squish the cars. Yeah, I, I'm not saying the right terminology for it. Right. But uh, yeah, literally squished Kevin Bacon in the car. You see this blood rolling out, and goodbye, Kevin Bacon. Yeah, yeah. So there's kind of like a murder mystery, and it, it, I don't want to say uh, giallo, yeah, kind of thing going on, but it's definitely a different vibe in Maxine. Mm-hmm. And it, some of the horror fans have already complained about it online, saying it's, you know, oh, it's not not as good and stuff. But it, it's a completely different type of movie. So it it's, it sounds like uh, you got a, a trilogy there, but you know they've all taken their own unique, yeah, you know, because it is it's all about the same people in every movie, and in this movie, Maxine has to face up to her past. And what's a big thing from her past, Adam, that we've been talking about off and on? throughout what's that her pentecostal father is behind he's he's the one that's behind all of this and she finally goes to that address that she's been that that was given to her at the beginning of the movie where all the parties are adam Mm -hmm. okay yeah well the parties are just a way to trap the the girls and and maxine becomes a victim of her father almost the detectives are also hot on maxine's trail because they're realizing Okay, all these people are, are dying, and the, and Maxine's always kind of connected to them somehow. So the detectives are kind of following Maxine, hoping that that will lead somewhere. Well, it does. Yeah. She she gets like kidnapped, and she's tied up, and it's like a religious cult surrounding her, doing all these chants. Yeah, it's kind of kind of freaky vibe. You know, you kind of oh, hopefully she doesn't end up like a. Edward Woodard in The Wicker Man, you know? Yeah. But it's a, kind of like a dark room with candles, and it's a very creepy vibe, you know? And it's like, this is not a real follower of Jesus here. <laughs> yeah. He, something's not right with this guy. Again, it's the whole theme of, uh, you know, he's trying to, to to force Maxine to bend to their version of the world, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, that's basically what he's been doing, and that's why she left, for crying out loud. That's why she got out of of that living in environment. She did what Pearl could not do. She escaped. Yeah. Pearl could just not get out of her own head and couldn't figure things out on her own. So she just kind of succumbed to her insanity where Maxine was just like, I got to get the, the only way I can escape is by getting out. Right. And, and the detectives kind of get seemingly get killed trying mm-hmm. to take down the, the dad. But of course, Maxine shotgun, Literally, the head explodes just like Pearl did at the end right. of X. And then, you know, it's kind of interesting because you see Maxine getting all of the glam, the the star treatment. You know, oh, she's officially a star now. That horror movie was a success. It, it kind of leaves – it's kind of ambiguous because did she dream all of that or did it really happen? Leaves it open for a fourth one, and wouldn't you know, he's working on a fourth movie. He's trying to expand the universe. He's trying to expand it, which I'm kind of – we'll see. I mean, I've been kind of pleasantly surprised with all these movies. If he can keep this going 
if he, I, I don't know if he's going to keep Mia Goth. You know, I'd love to see Mia Goth do something else. Right. She even says, I would like to do a romance film. She goes, I love, you know, <laughs> she yeah. said that in an interview, but it's, it, it, she, she is such a talented actress. Just to, I mean, imagine if Scorsese had a vision and he wanted to use her in a movie or any filmmaker of Scorsese's stature, mm -hmm. you know, Christopher Nolan could see something in her or, um, you know, so, so, some filmmaker, you know, some right. prominent filmmaker who, who does stuff other than horror movies. Cause She's going to be the the bride, and I can't remember if it's Del Toro's Frankenstein or if it's uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal's Frankenstein. I think it's Maggie Gyllenhaal's. Yeah, because okay, Christian Bale's the creature in that one, yeah. and she's playing the bride. You know, it. it I'm, no doubt she she do, she'll do a good job. I mean, Infinity Pool was not a great movie. I don't know if you remember hearing about that. I remember hearing about. Yeah, it, yeah. it was um, David Cronenberg's son. Yeah, Brand, I think his name is Brandon. Cronenberg, I, 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 yeah, correct me in the comments below, <laughs> but uh, yeah, she was really good in Infinity Pool, and she's just so psychotic in that movie. Jamesy, yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm sure you've seen that clip yeah. floating around. But I mean, it, I would love to see Mia Goth branch out and do different types of roles because she's got a lot of potential for being one of the most versatile actresses out there. Mm -hmm. You know, she could be the next Kate Blanchett and do any type of role you give her, you know? Right. But, but right now she's kind of stuck doing these these horror movies. Mm -hmm. So, well, I mean, if that's it, it, maybe she's like Boris Karloff and enjoys it. But when she said that interview, I'd like to do a romance film, it seems like she's longing to do different types of roles. Sure. You know? And, you know. There's nothing wrong with that. And know? she's no different. Uh, she's no stranger to living a crazy life because she's had a really – interesting on and off again thing with Shia LaBeouf, who's kind of yeah. whacked out himself. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, Shia LaBeouf is a talented actor. It's just, sure. he's just very wacky, you know? Yeah. They've, you know, had their issues, you know, yeah. unfortunately being celebrities, their issues get played out in, oh, I know. in public. We don't, you cause know, we don't really need to see any of that stuff, yeah. but it's, it, you know, having Ty West, you know, he found his muse in, in Mia Goth. And yeah. It's just interesting. I, I, I do want to see where he goes next with this. Yeah. Because I've never really paid attention. He's made several movies before these X films. Yeah. But I've never really paid attention to him. I, I, I know he got some acclaim before X. Yeah. The, the, these movies have really made people pay attention to him. And I, I, I want to say they've taken him more seriously, if that makes sense, Adam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I, I, you know, again, you know, you got to see these movies. They're, they're really top notch, top notch horror films. They yeah. really are. Again, each a different type of horror movie, which is, it is incredible how he was able to change the, the, the vibe in every single movie, but they're all connected. Yeah. He connects all of them brilliantly. He really does. Cause you see her looking up at the Bates motel on on the set in Maxine yeah and she glimpses and sees Pearl for an instance the old Pearl oh, nice. look, looking out at her it's a good shot you know and um, so I, oh go ahead uh, no Here's just uh, just quickly just to wrap up the whole the Night Stalker um, connection so you know as we know the, the Night Stalker was Richard Ramirez um, he was uh, a Satanist, a, a drug addict. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, his MO was to sneak into victims' houses and he would kill them by torturing them, stabbing them, shooting them, stomping them, bludgeoning them, you know, basically whatever he wanted to do with them. Um, as far as its connection to the movie, there was no, like, maxing character in his story no. or anything like that. It's basically, uh, so what it looks like Ty West was just trying to do was just wrap reality into his fictional story. Right, right. Yeah. You know, and, and I hate to keep bringing up Scorsese, yeah. but he kind of yeah. did that to a, a large extent in Gangs of New York because, you know, the, the the draft riots in the Civil yeah. War. And, I mean, Bill the Butcher was a real character, even though different time. Yeah. Bill the Butcher died in 1847, and he brings it up to the Civil yeah. War. But it, it's amazing how he kind of does a similar thing, you know, yeah. taking a real – you know, Ben Hur is probably another great example because Ben Hur is not a real character, but the the life of Christ is kind of a backdrop for everything that happens within the the Ben Hur story. Right. But yeah, Maxine, uh, you know, it's if you look really deep within, 
Mia Goth produced all of these movies. Mm-hmm. So it's a powerful statement about female empowerment too. Sure. If you really want to, if you really want to read into it and stuff, I we kind of have to to talk about it. Mm-hmm. But it's definitely a, a female empowerment movie for sure. All yeah. three of them. Yeah. To empower yourself in, in, a, in a world where you're constantly being taken advantage of. Yeah. And Maxine's definitely being taken advantage of in, in, in the movies. And Pearl as well. But you get to see, it's almost like The Godfather, where you get to see Vito Corleone, how he handled situations. And you see Michael, <laughs> night and day, how Maxine and Pearl handled the situations, as you right. saw with Michael and Vito Corleone. They, Michael didn't handle them so well. No. Where Maxine handled them well. Pearl, <laughs> obviously, she couldn't get out of the farm. She yeah. really couldn't. But it, it's it's such a, a great film trilogy. It'll be interesting to see how time treats these movies. Yeah. Because pe- people love Pearl. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the critics, prominent filmmakers. The audiences, though, that some of them did, some of them didn't. It was kind of mixed, which leads me to believe if, if it's going to be anything like you know, some of our favorite filmmakers, a troubled legacy, it could have, um, it could age like fine wine. And I, and I kind of see that happening again. They're, they're all successes. They all made money, but it just seems like for, for some instance, Pearl is kind of divided the audience a little bit. Right. Whereas, I mean, X was for the slasher crowd. It pleased the, the, the crowd, right? You know, it pleased that particular audience. Whereas Pearl, I think it, you know, they were expecting it to be a full on slasher film, but they, they got like a melodrama instead with some psychological horror in it. Right. Which I, I love. I, I, I like the slow burn type movies. You know how I am. Yeah. With, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I like all of them, but Pearl is the one that just, I, I keep, I, I keep like not obsessing over, but it's the one that just sticks out on my mind the most. Maxine is really good too. But for some reason, Pearl is the one I is it, just to me. It, I think there's something special there, and as time goes on, I think more and more people I think will will respond even mm. better. And again, I, these movies didn't tank. I don't think yeah. Maxine will tank either. We'll find out when we look at the the box office numbers. But man, it's just like Hollywood is so obsessed with numbers, but they don't seem to realize if you announce streaming or Blu-ray releases. It's going to kill the excitement about going to the theater. So hopefully right. they, they, they just don't talk about coming soon to 4K, Maxine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I really hope if you haven't seen these three movies, watch them. And, you know, just like Adam was told, you need to watch X. You need to watch Pearl before watching Maxine. If you don't watch, I mean, technically you could go, Adam, and watch Maxine, mm-hmm. but it's not going to be as satisfying to you. Okay. Because there's, you know, there's reflections that you, you, you'll probably not get. Mm-hmm. And that's the same with anyone who watches Maxine first. Some people recommend you watch Pearl first, then you watch X and then Maxine, gotcha. which is an interesting Good. way to, to do it because, you know, it, it, literally it all starts with Pearl mm-hmm. and it continues with, with X and then culminates in Maxine. Mm-hmm. So I, either way you look at it, I think this is going to be a trilogy and all three of these films will equally equally be discussed. You know, the, the people are talking about them now, but I think it's it's going to even get even bigger as time goes on. That's just my prediction. I could be totally wrong. Do you agree? I, I always forget to do this at the beginning, but yeah. subscribe to our, our channel on YouTube so you never miss an episode when we post it. We're, we're really working hard to try to get the video for you. We are working hard. We <laughs> will get it at some point. I'm an audio guy, so the that's an easy thing for me. Video, not so easy for me. I know you've dabbled a little bit with video here. A little bit. There. We're working on it. We'll yes. get there. But uh, let us know what you think about uh, Ty West, his X trilogy, Mia Goth. If you want to talk about her, I, I don't. Th- I even my wife, she she was totally upset and <laughs> totally disturbed by by Pearl. Even Scorsese, who's seen a lot of. Yep. twisted movies in his day. He he couldn't sleep because that movie really had an impact. It, these movies are not easy to watch, but there's a lot of rewards if you do. It's not your traditional slasher film. I will tell you that. Even X has a lot of the, the, the vibes, similar vibes of a slasher film. Doesn't 
feel like a slasher film we've seen before, even though we mm-hmm. probably have. Right. It, am I making sense in yes, saying that, Adam? Yep. It's just, Ty West has really done something unique and special here, and I hope you uh, go out and enjoy it. And I'll be there day one for the fourth one. That he's got it. He's writing it now. Hopefully, you know, A twenty four seems to be the studio, <laughs> probably the only studio he can do it with. But I'm definitely excited to see what's next for Maxine or the X world as a whole. Right. So again, like subscribe on YouTube, give us some feedback, talk to us, you know, you disagree with us, you know, you're tired of me talking about Scorsese. I'm sure Adam is. Uh, So just like comment. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook X. Our handle is at scared for reals. We'll see you next time on scared for reals. Ha, 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 ha.